and thank you for having me today here. Uh, what I'm going to do today is to, to give you an update on, on the work and the project that we are uh, doing on growing uh, young trees under individual protective covers or from now on IPCs. Uh, this is a project that is updating all the time as, as we gather data uh, on a weekly basis. Uh, and to start, I would like to, this is a, a slide that I, I like to show always, and it's a comparison on young versus mature trees, uh, because they have different biology and so they have different requirements. In the case of mature trees, we all know that they are already all infected by, uh, by HLV, so they are declining in production. Uh, so in this case, the, the, the objective is to maintain the production, the yield, or, or in, in ideally to increase the yield. But in the case of young trees, they come to the field uh, healthy and HLV free. They are not producing yet, but our goal, our desired goal here is to keep the trees free from disease as long as possible. Uh, ideally to have them into production free of the disease. And there are different, different uh, strategies to this, and as Arnold Schumann mentioned before, one is silly exclusion. You can do that by cups, uh, but you can do that also with, with individual protective covers. And the, and the concept is, is really similar. It's a, it's a, is a 50 mesh bar what we are using uh, or what we are testing. Um, and you can use that in, in solid planted blocks or in in, uh, in resets in the, in the field that has already mature trees in the middle. Um, so this, this tool intrigued us uh, because several questions just arise immediately. So, for example, are really IPCs effective to prevent infection? Do IPC uh, affect the physiology of the trees? And, and if does that is able to affect also the productivity of the trees? And also, for how long can we? Uh, maintain an IPC on a tree. Uh, and something that is very interesting, if you can maintain the IPCs in the tree for, for longer periods of time, is if you are able to, fruit, uh, to, to set fruit in those trees, and if that production will be, will be important enough. Uh, with all these questions in mind, what we did was to start a, a, a trial in, in our center in Imokali uh, in January 2018. We planted 93, uh, they were Valencia or Clio, and 45 were with, with the mesh, with the, with the IPCs, and 45 were without them. Uh, we had uh, five reps, three trees per rep, and we had uh, six different treatments. Uh, actually three and three in both cases, uh, regarding two uh, insecticide application. We had no insecticide, we have half doses of insecticide and full doses of insecticide as is, as is recommended. Um, and we did the application of insecticide every, every six weeks. Um, and the, the main results so far, and this is not 18 months as I told you, we are updating this information all the time, this is 20 months, and we can see that under ABC all the trees are negative for HLV, so, so there is no infection. And all control trees without IPC are already infected by, the, by, by HLV. Now, we, we already know that IPCs also alter some, some growth parameters, and it is, this is probably due because, because IPCs, the cover, uh, reduce vapor pressure deficit inside, inside, the, inside the bag, uh, and we know that when this happens, we have an increased photosynthesis, 
and we have increased vegetative growth. And just an example of this, you can see here we were counting flashes in the, in the trees, both outside and inside, and we can see that in the blue, in the blue graph, in the blue plot, you can see that 100% of the trees were, were flashing at the same time. Uh, and, the, and the flashing period was, was shorter. So it was, it was much more consistent than the trees without the APCs. You can see that only 80% of the, of the trees were, were, were flashing at, at the same time and we had some, some smaller peak uh, of, of flashing, so, so the flashing pattern was more consistent under IPCs than without the IPCs. Now, of course, uh, this, is not, this is not a perfect. Uh, there are some concerns. So, for example, we, we, we are asking ourselves, what about other pests, other diseases? Uh, what about the growth in, uh, in, 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 these, in these trees under the IPCs? What about leaf drop? This is something that, that some other colleagues have told us. Uh, we see a lot of leaf drop there and some other growers also, but we saw that also, but, but we were thinking that, that maybe that would be a visual effect because the leaves are, are, are being kept in the, in the bags. And finally, that is something that is, as I told you, really interesting for us. What about fruit set? So, in the rest of my presentation, I will walk through. I will walk you through all of these or some of these uh, concerns. So, regarding other pests, what we have seen is, uh, for example, spider mites inside the IPCs. We have seen some army worms, we have seen ants, we have seen some leaf rollers. Uh, so <coughs> the idea here is that you cannot rely solely on the IPCs and you have to do your scouting and your, and your treatments also. Uh, what we haven't seen inside the IPCs is any silids. We, we exclude the silids totally. Very interesting regarding diseases other than HLV, we have seen very, very low, uh, very low impact of, of, of cancer, for example, no more than 20%, as compared to 80 to 100% uh, without the, in the trees without IPC. In the case of greasy spot, for example, we don't see any difference in the number of trees affected by greasy spot outside or, or inside the, the IPCs. But visually what what looks like but we need we need still we need a confirmation of this but visually what looks like is that the trees that are under the IPCs uh, the severity of the greasy spot is, is is higher but the number of trees is the, the number of affected trees is the same. Now this can be also uh, a seasonal effect, so so we need to follow this during during different seasons. Uh, regarding to leaf drop, uh, one of the one of the challenges that we had is that yeah, of course we can we can we can count the leaves inside the bags, and there's a lot of leaves, uh, 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 but it's, it's really difficult to. to to see the, the, the leaf drop in, uh, outside the IPC. So, so to, to, to measure that, what we did was uh, we, we, we built some, some chicken wire cages ar around, around the trees without, without the IPC, so we could collect the, the leaves, and we are collecting the leaves weekly there. And what we have seen so far, and this is cumulative data of, of five months, is that there is no difference so far in, in, in the number of leaves that drop. Again, this can be also uh, seasonal. Uh, and for example, we, we saw more leaves dropping in, in early spring uh, outside the IPCs than inside the IPCs, but in, in summer we, we have the opposite. So at the end we have the same number of leaves uh, dropping in both cases. Now regarding to fruit set, uh, 
we are talking about uh, younger trees and, and these younger trees they are not producing yet and they will be not producing probably in one or more, or more years uh, now we have a new project uh, funded by CRDF uh, that, that was awarded last year uh, to expand this, this kind of, of, of work to, to other varieties that are interesting uh, mandarin type varieties like sugar bell, early bread and tango. So what we are doing is trying to understand before uh, what is going on with fruit set and if we can manage a uh, fruit set in, inside the IPCs. And to do that, what we did was just bagging individual, individual flowers and see if we could set fruit in that way. This is, this is a, a, an adult tree of, of, of sugar bell, so we don't need to, to, to wait until our trees inside the IPCs are producing, so this is a mature tree. And we, we, we bagged a, a single flower, and what we did it was a classical management procedure, which is uh, treat the, the flower at petal fold with, with, with gibberellic acid, and what we found last year was a 70% of fruit set in this case, as compared to 0% if you don't if you don't do this this management this management uh, uh, technique of applying GL3 at, at petal fold. This year we repeat it again, and what we found for a single flower was the same number, 70% as compared to 0%. And when we, when we bagged uh, multiple flowers in a branch, so a, 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 a whole branch, we, we found 30% of fruit set if we didn't treat uh, with, with gibberellic acid, probably because there is, there is pollination from the other flowers inside the bag, and up to 80% of, of, of fruit set uh, if we treat it with, with GL3. These are really good numbers in terms of, of fruit set and this tells us that, that we can that we can grow at least this variety and we are doing this also with tango and early right now uh, we can grow at least this variety and make it profitable in in, in protected environments and actually we can manage we can manage the, the yield so in conclusion after 18 in this case, 20 months, IPCs prevented ACP transmission and HLV infection. We know that already. However, you cannot rely only on this, and insect scouting and pest and disease management are still necessary. And we have seen that several growth parameters are modified by, by these covers. And also, finally, that some varieties are able to bloom and set fruit under these conditions. Now, last week, uh, we, we proceed to, to replace our smaller, uh, smaller uh, IPCs with these new 8 feet uh, IPCs and we, we took the opportunity of, of, of the replacement to scout for, for pests and disease, so most of the data that I show you today come from from the work that, that we that we did uh, last last week, and, and finally we installed the new the new IPCs. This was a, a, a work that involved several labs and several departments in, in our in our in our center. My own department, citrus horticulture, uh, citrus pathology, plant physiology, and entomology. So it was a, a joint effort to do that. Um, and Yes, two days ago we went back to the field, and as you can see, uh, this is how the how the trees looked after we, we removed the IPCs. So there is a, a constraint in growth, but that that constraint in growth is is starting to to be relieved only after four days. So so the new shoots are already are already colonizing the new space and that's that's really fast and this is really interesting so this open 
also new possibilities for, for research that we are that we are considering. So for example, how changing the to bigger IPCs will affect the tree growth and the tree physiology. So for example, we know that a vapor pressure deficit is going to be is going to be uh, modified by that. And if that happens, how will uh, how will uh, affect the physiology of the trees in the new environment. So for example, branch unfolding. Uh, what about pest and disease incidence in, inside this new environment? And how about the flushing and blooming patterns? And also one project that we are going to start very soon is um, we are going to, to look at the, the, the well-known edge effect. So probably, maybe, is what we think, maybe we don't need to, to to place all the all the IPCs in the in, in a whole solid block. Maybe we can we can leave some some areas of the of the group uh, without without IPCs because this this tendency of the seal is to accumulate or to colonize mostly the, the, the edges of, of, of a grow. So we are working on that as well. And with that, uh, I want to acknowledge uh, Citrus Research and Development Foundation for, for founding our project. And, and also to Southern, uh, Southern Citrus Nurseries and the Tree Defender Company for all their support with this, with this project. And to my colleagues and friends, Ute, Dr. Ute Albrecht, Dr. Oscar Batuman, Dr. Jawad Qureshi, and our multi-county extension agent in Label, Monji Sekri, who was instrumental in, in having this uh, started as he put us in, in touch with, with the Tree Defender Company. And also, finally, uh, to our master student, Susmita Gaire, who is the person who is doing most of the hard work in the field. And with that, I finish. And we do have a couple of questions. A um, couple of questions, starting down here. The question is, uh, we have developed now a practice to say, you know, after 18 months to replace the, the bag, or was it the plan from the very early beginning, or is it better to start with the bigger bag in the beginning? Yeah, the question is, actually, in summary, for how long can we get the, the bags before, before we, we replace them? Uh, and that depends on several things. That depends first on the variety. Now we are we are working here with Valencia and Clio, which at the beginning they don't go very fast. But some other varieties they do. For example, if you are if you are growing sugar bell, probably you cannot have those trees uh, for for 18 months without changing the cover for a big one. That's one thing. Another one is is the management that you are doing in the growth. If you are spoon feeding your trees, probably they are going to, to grow faster. So that will that will require a, a, a shorter period of, of replacement. There's another question there. How are you? How is pollination? Well, uh, some varieties, some varieties, they don't require pollination. In the case of sugar bell, uh, what we have shown is that that you you don't need pollination. What what you do is is just to to induce the, the fruit set with gibberellic acid. So in some varieties, it's possible uh, it's possible not to have not to have a pollinator, but that depends on the variety. In Parthenocarpic varieties, you don't need a pollinator. In the other ones, it depends. So in this one, in the case of sugar bell, for example, we have seen that, that you don't need it. In some others, maybe that will be a problem. Okay. Uh, okay, one quick, quick, quick question. Are you going to be able to reuse those bags? We, we are going to reuse them. Yeah, actually, what we, what we are doing is, is to wash them, to clean them, to disinfect them somehow and, and put them again in, 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 new, in new plantings. Okay. All right. Thank you, Dr. Alvarez.